All right, well, hi guys. Um, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. I'm Dhruv Singhal, the founder of Years, as well as a sophomore at Matia Valley High School in Aurora, Illinois. It's great to see that many of you guys are interested in listening to the speaker today. And I hope that this event once again provides you with new insight and knowledge. I do want to share about our next couple of webinars. On April 5th, we are inviting a computer science graduate from the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. And on April 19th, we are hosting a webinar with a computer science student from The Ohio State University. If these two computer science events pique your interest, check out our website to sign up for these events. Now, I would like to welcome our speaker today, Isha Thiel. Isha is a senior studying mechanical engineering with a minor in technology and management at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. She has completed internships at Caterpillar, Molex, and Boeing, and will be an upcoming intern at Ellie Lilly this, this summer. Isha is really excited to share her journey and talk more about her field today. So I hope that through this event, you learn a lot about mechanical engineering and how you can pursue that field in the future. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever throughout the webinar, you can write them in the chat or save it for the Q&A at the end. Now, thank you so much, Isha, for taking time out of your busy schedule to help inspire students to pursue your STEM career. And without further ado, please give Isha your undivided attention and a warm virtual round of applause. Isha, you can take it underway. All right, thank you so much for the introduction and for hosting the webinar. Again, as um, Drew said, I'm really excited to be here and hope that um, you know part of, part of my experience and journey can help one of you um, be more excited or just be, um, you know, learn more about mechanical engineering. Um, so I'd like to start off with a quick poll um, that Drew will put in the in the Zoom um, just to gauge if um, you're a high school student, um, you know, middle school student, college student, whatever it is, um, just so I can tailor the presentation to you know fit the audience a little bit better. So it looks like a lot of you guys are high school students, which is fantastic. And we have okay. some parents, some college students, some middle school students. We have people from all variety. Okay, great. Yeah, well, let's get started. Um, I will go ahead and share the agenda for today. So I'll be doing a quick introduction of myself, as well as what is mechanical engineering. Um, also talking about my high school and college education and experiences. Um, going into some projects that I've done, as well as competitions, um, you know, talking about my internship and work experience, as well as skills to be a mechanical engineer, and my future plans and any advice and suggestions um, for you all out there. So beginning with the introduction, um, a little bit about me. I am a senior at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Um, I'm from Naperville, Illinois. I love to play badminton, travel, cook. Um, and do, you know, crafts and DIYs in my free time. And of course, I'm passionate about STEM outreach, um, which is why I'm here today, and I'm excited to share with you all. So what exactly is mechanical engineering? Um, you know, the Google definition says mechanical engineering is a study of objects and systems in motion. You have to apply math and science principles to design and analyze, um, you know, these different types of mechanical systems. And I think in you know, simpler terms, mechanical engineering is really why things work and understanding how things work and really diving into that on a deep level. Um, if you consider science as the study of finding answers to different questions, then engineering would be the study of designing solutions to existing problems. And I think that all of you are probably already practicing engineering and problem solving skills in your daily life. When you find a problem around your household or something setting breaks and you have to fix it, you're already going through the engineering design process by um, you know, identifying a problem and coming up with a solution, testing it out, um, trying it again if it doesn't work, and going through that iterative process again and again. So you know, a huge skill um, that mechanical engineers have is really problem solving. While the principle comes from math and science, um, understanding and knowledge through tons of you know, math and physics and chemistry courses that you'll take, a lot of the 
um, you know, a lot of what it means to be a real mechanical engineer is applying that knowledge to real world problems and designing solutions, designing products and services um, that will be pushed out to, you know, consumers and companies in the real world. So just diving a little bit deeper into what are some of the specific classes that you might take as a mechanical engineer. Um, there's thermodynamics, physics, materials, fluid mechanics, heat transfer. Um, there's also a lot of circuitry and mechanical system analysis. Um, and of course, design is such a big component of mechanical engineering as well. I haven't taken all of these classes yet, but almost all of them. Um, and I'll be finishing them, them up soon as I complete my senior year of college. And just showing um, a brief, you know, like course, course overview that I've gone through. Um, you can see that a lot of the, you know, fundamental courses happen in your junior, senior year, um, which is really when you learn how to apply those math and science principles in a different way. Um, you know, like classes like heat transfer that I'm currently taking um, uses a lot of the knowledge from basic physics and calculus classes, and you apply it to um, specific mechanical systems and situations. So first, I'd like to go into my um, high school education and experiences and really talk about um, how I got interested and why I chose to study engineering in the first place. So starting off with NIU EAP and my robotics team. NIU EAP is the Enhancing Engineering Pathways program that I did as part of middle school and high school. I was, I was a participant for three years and a high school mentor for four years. Um, and this was through the uh, Northern Illinois University. And it was really um, a large reason of why I chose engineering. Every other Saturday, we would do hands-on experiments, um, you know, outside the classroom, such as building fruit batteries, also building a flashlight from scratch, um, you know, sewing little um, conductive threads and um, circuit pieces onto bracelets and um, shirts to make wearable electronics. Um, and really cool projects that I would have never done if I was just, you know, learning about engineering in my high school and middle school classes. Um, so this was a really unique program that I did, and I benefited a lot from this supplement of learning that I wasn't getting at school. Um, I was really interested to, to, you know, just get mentorship from the other high schoolers and college students that were there. Um, women, or women in engineering is definitely um, a big reason that I was motivated to study engineering because there's so much support and push to get more girls in the STEM field nowadays. Um, and I think I was really inspired by seeing these other high school and college students do such amazing things in their, in their path and in their major. Um, and it really helped me understand how I could fit in to be an engineer, specifically a mechanical engineer as well. And then I was on the robotics team in my high school for two years as well. Um, and this was really awesome to help me understand more of the hands-on design aspect of mechanical engineering. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you do in the engineering design process, starting with problem identification and um, prototyping, but then the robotics team helped me to go from, um, you know, starting off with nothing to ending up with a completed robot and having to um, fix it during, you know, stressful competitions, work on a team, really figure out team dynamics and how to break up work. Um, in a much more intense way than I've ever done in any type of school project um, that I did in middle school or high school. And next, um, you know, entering PLTW courses. So these are the project lead the way classes that I was able to take at my high school. Um, and these were such a big um, help, I would say, when I started college, but also just to really pique my interest more in mechanical engineering specifically. I started with taking Introduction to Engineering Design during my sophomore year. And this really introduced me to CAD, which is computer-aided design software, um, such as um, you know, Autodesk Inventor is what we use at my school. And we did a lot of engineering drawings by hand and on the computer. We also learned about the engineering design process and a lot of the fundamentals of what it means to be any type of engineer. Um, then I went into principles of engineering, which was more specifically focused on mechanical engineering projects and hands-on design, but we also did um, projects such as building a fuel cell operated car. Um, we also did some more coding and electrical engineering based projects with circuitry and robotics, and it was a really great um, way to do hands-on engineering design projects. 
And lastly, as part of my senior year, I took engineering design and development, which was a capstone course after taking the two other PLTW courses. And I worked with the um, two team members that, I, that you see in the picture to you know, come up with this year long project and present it at the end of the year to a panel of engineers. So this was really um, the most critical course I think that I took in, in high school because it prepared me really well for my introductory engineering courses in college. We went through the, the total engineering design process from start to finish, um, starting with problem identification and coming up with a working prototype by the end of the year. Um, and I think for me, you know, it can be really easy to get bogged down in high school by AP classes and tons of other things going on. Um, but the engineering PLTW classes were a great way for me to um, apply the math and science that I was learning in a different way and in a different, um, different manner in a much more hands-on way than I was really getting in any other classes in high school that I took. So the next slide, I'll just show a quick video of what our project was. Um, we focused on rear end collision prevention. This is a really um, you know, big topic for anyone who drives a car. You, you might've been in a rear end collision, you might've um, witnessed one, and we wanted to do something to combat that. So we took an ultrasonic sensor, which is um, a sensor that detects um, distance, and we connected it to a lighting panel that we 3D printed. We put in lights and circuitry using an Arduino, um, and this would be this project was um, you know, focused on having the driver behind you understand your braking intensity. So as you press harder on the brake, more lights will be lit up at the back of, at, at the back of your car so that the person behind you knows your braking intensity. So this is a really cool project that um, you know, I thought was impactful that we did in high school. And I could have never imagined that I would do something like this um, you know, before taking this class. Next, I'll move to speaking about my college education and experiences. So starting off with Women in Engineering and SWE, which I sort of touched on before through NIU East, but um, I would say that Women in Engineering, the program at Illinois is fantastic and a really big reason why I chose to come to Illinois in the first place, because I felt really supported and that I already knew a ton of people in the program and I knew there would be mentors or um, you know, people available to guide me as a women in engineering, which is definitely a male dominated field. Um, so in that picture on the top right, you see um, there's over a hundred girls here. It's at WE orientation, which is women in engineering orientation, which happens a couple days before the school year starts. Um, so we move in early, we get to do all these cool activities with other engineers starting. Um, and it's really just a great way to introduce us to um, the Granger College of Engineering, Illinois as a school, and help us get more excited and feel supported at school. Um, and I'm, you know, still friends with some of the girls that I met there today, um, and it was a great way to kick off my college career. And Society of Women Engineers is an, is an international um, group, and I've been very involved throughout my time at college, and it's really helped me, um, you know, become a more confident person and give me a lot of leadership experience as well. Um, I've had multiple chair positions. I've been the webmaster, social director, um, and I've been to three international conferences in the past couple of years through um, my college, which have been really exciting and just such a great way to network with female professionals and other collegiate students around the nation. Um, in the picture on the bottom right, you can see my SWE section at our conference in Minneapolis two years ago. And I was actually part of a technical team um, and we presented our project at this conference and we won third place. And we got to go on stage with, um, you know, maybe like 14,000 people in the audience. It was a huge reception. Um, and we accepted our award on stage and it was super exciting to me that I could even be there and doing that as a sophomore in college. So Society of Women, Society of Women Engineers is definitely a really strong support group that I've had. And I definitely recommend to any other high school girls who are on the call um, to explore um, in high school, there's high school sections as well as when you get to college as well. Next, moving to study abroad. I did have the opportunity to study abroad in Madrid during my sophomore year in the spring. I went to Comillas Pontifical University in Spain um, and I had a really amazing time. It was such an awesome experience for me. I wanted to study abroad since high school. Um, and as I said, I love to travel. So this was such a great way to combine all of those passions and 
interests of mine. Um, a common myth is that engineers don't get to study abroad or there's no programs available for you to study abroad um, because it's hard to find universities that offer international credits. And that was definitely a myth um, you know, that I was able to um, come by here because there is an engineering study abroad office which you know, matches you directly with programs for semester long study abroad or short term um, during winter break or spring break programs. And they did a really awesome job of putting me in this program um, and just getting me outside of my comfort zone during the study abroad experience. Um, you know, it was definitely the first time that I've done something on my own, super independent and forced me to think outside the box and just handle situations myself um, and learn a lot about how I, um, how I conduct myself and how I can be the best version of myself, you know, in a place that I don't know anyone. Um, having to adapt um, and just be flexible is definitely something that I learned from studying abroad. And I highly recommend, um, you know, looking into study abroad if you're interested at all. Um, there are so many benefits and just an awesome way to have a unique semester in college. Lastly, in this section of uh, my presentation, I'll talk about my minor in technology and management. So what is technology and management? It's a joint minor between the College of Engineering and Business at Illinois, um, and it's 22 credits. So it is 22 credits on top of my um, already existing mechanical engineering degree. Um, so it sounds like a lot, but you know, I, I chose to do this minor because there are so many benefits of learning about business skills and how to combine those with my existing engineering degree that I wanted to explore. Um, you know, as I learned about more career paths and different types of jobs during the career fair, and as I talked to people who worked at companies of interest for me, it sounded like the work that they do is very cross-functional and diverse. Um, you know, you might not just be working with another mechanical engineer. You're probably going to be working with um, a couple of mechanical engineers, but maybe someone in finance or someone in marketing to help understand how to price your product or how to market your product um, to customers and consumers. And you need to know, um, you know, you need to know a little bit more than just mechanical engineering to be able to talk to these people and to be able to have a, have a successful product, um, you know, at whatever company that you decide to work for. Um, and it seemed like this minor was such a great way to combine the engineering and business knowledge. So I decided to pick up this minor um, and I've been really fortunate that, you know, it's been a great experience for me. I've been able to really understand, you know, what I think I'd be good at in the future for a future job in my career um, and give me a lot of leadership experience and developing soft skills through being a student employee as, as part of the program as well. Um, you know, I see a lot of people who graduate mechanical engineering who choose really technical career paths and technical jobs. Um, but personally, I think this program has helped me um, understand that I don't want, you know, 100% technical career path. And there's other opportunities and there's other types of um, jobs that I would like to explore. And the flexibility that this program gives me is to do different, um, you know, internship experiences with the corporate sponsors. and and really talk to people who've taken those unique career paths to help me understand where I wanna go as well. Next, I'll be talking about some projects and competitions that I've done in college. First, talking about design courses. Every design course that you'll take, um, you know, in, in high school or college, you'll do some type of project or multiple projects. Um, so I, I just put in a quick diagram of the engineering design process so you can see what the main steps are. Um, and this is such a big focus of any design class and project that I've done. You, you know, you can't do a project or you can't come up with a solution if you don't identify the problem and you don't have your target consumer or your target customer in mind or the end goal that you want to reach. Um, so I definitely learned that that was, you know, the first step. You can't just dive into solving a problem if you don't know the parameters and the constraints. Um, and through the various design courses that I've taken so far, I've been able to understand each step of the process much better. Um, I also use quite a bit of computer-aided design, as I mentioned before, in you know, all these design courses. And on the next slide, I'll show some of those examples um, that I have from CAD software. But you, you know, you're able to do different types of animations. You can make drawings, and you can do finite element analysis, which is more, um, um, you know, more testing the forces and loads on a structure or on a component. 
So as you can see on this slide, I have some examples. On the left, um, I have an exploded view of a bike speaker that I designed my sophomore year. Um, so it's so, you know, it shows the various components that I built in this CAD software. I used Creo Parametric um, and I exploded them so that you could see each individual component. And this is something that, you know, you frequently do when you are trying to explain a design or see the various components um, in a design. And in the top right, I'll show an animation that my team created for a design project last semester. Um, and it, you know, shows the gearbox and how the gears interact with each other. So this was again made through a CAD software. And in the uh, bottom right, there's a engineering drawing of a standing desk that I helped to design during my freshman year design course. Um, so, you know, you can see the different views and you can see dimensions as well as any other type of tolerancing information on an engineering drawing. So these three, you know, examples are very common things that mechanical engineers have to do in design projects. But you know, this is something that will carry past just college, and you'll see these in any type of design engineering role in your career as a mechanical engineer. Next, a competition I'd like to touch on is the International Business Plan Competition. So you might be wondering, you know, why is a mechanical engineer doing a business plan competition that seems so random or you know, kind of out of the ordinary? Um, and this, you know, this was very different than any of the other design projects that I've done in the past. It was a 10 day competition in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I traveled with some of my classmates from the technology and management minor to participate in this competition. Um, so the theme was to come up with some type of product or service that would help integrate someone with a disability into society. And I worked on a team of six with students from Brazil, Hong Kong and Germany. So it was a very diverse team. Um, and we had a pretty short time span to come up with some type of product or service as well as a full business plan, which I had never done before. So it was definitely, you know, a difficult competition for me to jump into and push me way outside my comfort zone of anything I've done before. Um, my team actually ended up winning first place. We created an app to help facilitate conversations with um, people with some type of hearing disability or hearing impairment um, in public settings like a school or a classroom or a bank. Um, and I was really proud of what we'd done in such a short time span. Um, it was it was really helpful to confirm my passion that you know I want to go into a field that's directly helping the lives of people and making a difference. Um, and it really got me more excited for more types of business focused classes that help combine the engineering knowledge that I have along with business principles. Congrats, Isha, for that. And that's an amazing accomplishment. Just in 10 Thank you. Years, we're able to develop something that can make an impact on the world. And kudos to you for that. Thank you. Next, I'll be talking about some of the internship and work experience that I've had so far. So first, in um, 2018, after my freshman year of college, I worked at Caterpillar as a parallel co-op engineer. So this was, you know, right behind my campus in Champaign, Illinois. There's an awesome research park facility where there are tons of companies, there's at least over 100 by now, where they have small satellite offices um, and they hire tons of you know, engineering students and business students from the, from the University of Illinois to work there. Um, so the work that I did was mostly design-based, which was a great application as a mechanical engineer because I was learning so many design principles um, you know, during my freshman and sophomore year classes. So I worked with um, one other intern to redesign the spindle component of an off-highway truck. Um, and it was a pretty ongoing long project. So I did that for the majority of my time at Caterpillar. Next, during the summer of 2019, I worked at Molex as a mechanical engineering intern. Um, and you know, as the name suggests, I did do a lot of mechanical-based projects. So I designed a force gauge using a um, CAD software again and went to the machine shop and had it built and gave it to my team to use. I worked on geometric tolerancing for a new product line and you know, got some of the standards and uh, manufacturing information which I came up with onto engineering drawings and standards for that product line. I also worked on creating wire schematics and sending those to our customers um, through softwares online, but also physical prototypes so that they could see um, you know, what the wiring um, team was for the product that they requested. Um, and I also did an intern innovation challenge with a few other members of the internship 
And we were the first place winner of a project there related to knowledge sharing at Molex, which was super unique. And again, something that pushed me outside of my comfort zone because I'd never done anything um, you know, in that realm before working with so many people who weren't engineers. I was working with um, some engineering interns, but also an HR intern and a finance intern. And it was a really unique experience. And this past summer, I worked at Boeing virtually um, you know, due to the pandemic, I worked virtually and I was a product data management intern. So this is definitely a little bit different than the last two experiences that I had. And I really did want to try something new this summer um, and just, um, you know, explore the interest and passion that I do have for the te technology and management minor, which I started to pursue last year. So I worked with a team of product managers um, and they, you know, they're in charge of 30 plus international contracts for simulators that um, pilots use to train for, um, you know, train on to use these fighter helicopters and devices that Boeing creates, um, such as the Apache helicopter, if you've heard of that. Um, so my team would work with all these international customers, make sure that the timelines were on track, make sure that they were getting all the parts that they needed. Um, you know, there's no miscommunication between what software the pilots had to use and what the update was, or, you know, different types of issues um, on an international basis every single day. So I worked with another intern on the team to push out a new scheduling tool, and this would encompass, um, you know, a team of over 100 people that it affected, um, which were, you know, directly related to all the work that my team was doing. And we, you know, coordinated work orders through a lean management software, which means that there was people sending in work to our team or there were people doing work for our team and we had to manage all those requests in the software. We also had to um, make sure there was enough space and people allotted to get the work done. Um, you know, the calendar wasn't too busy and there were enough um, time slots allotted to get all the work and the work orders completed. Um, so I had a really unique experience from the past two internships and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm glad I tried something outside of mechanical engineering for that summer. And next, I will be interning at Eli Lilly in Indianapolis as a drug discovery and development intern. So as you can see, these are you know, four pretty varied experiences. They're not all in the same industry. A lot of them you know, have to do with manufacturing of big or small parts or you know, devices like planes and tractors and um, trucks. But um, I'm really fortunate that I've been able to try different industries and work in these different sectors. I think it's really valuable for me to you know, have been able to figure out what I do like and what I don't like through these different types of experiences. Um, and I know, you know, finding internships and finding a job even after you graduate is really difficult. Um, you have to put in a lot of effort to seek out roles and, you know, make sure that you have a strong resume when you're, um, you know, seeking out these work experiences. But I think it's just as valuable to spend a summer doing summer courses or working on a side project. If you have an Arduino laying around at home, you can do so much with that. Or if you, you know, take up a coding software, you can create an app or you can create something that you're passionate about or that you want to explore, you know, in, in your summer to make it a productive time. And the last thing I wanted to touch on in this section is the Whirlpool externship that I did during the summer of 2019. So this is different than an internship. It's shorter. It's, um, it was about a one week experience. And it's geared specifically towards sophomores and juniors who are seeking internships. Um, so, you know, if you are a college student seeking internships, definitely look out for these types of opportunities because it's a really great way to, you know, say to this company, hey, I'm interested in you as a potential employer for an internship or um, a full-time job after graduation. And you really just get to learn about what they do and see their products, meet the people there. We even got to um, talk to the CEO for a couple hours, which was awesome. Um, and it was, a, it's, it was a much more intimate experience than an internship where there's, um, you know, maybe a lot more students there for the summer. Could you talk a little bit about the difference between an internship and an externship? I mean, we often hear about internships, but I don't think a lot of us are familiar with what an externship is. So could you shed some light on that? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think, um, you know, even for me, before I saw this opportunity online, I'd never really heard of an externship either. So I think they're um, starting to become more popular. And I do know more companies that have been coming out with these externship opportunities. Um, but I think the main difference is that during an externship, 
you don't have your own project or work that you are completing. Um, during all of my internships, I had my own projects to work on. I had you know, a daily list of tasks to complete. I had people to report to. I had, um, you know, I had different deadlines and work that I was managing throughout the entire summer or, you know, the whole experience. But during an externship, it's a much shorter time frame. So you might not be working on your own project or um, turning in a deliverable at the end, but you're still going through um, the rest of the activities that you would do at an internship. So that's interacting with people at the company, um, talking to different types of, um, you know, engineers. We did a lot of networking with engineers who were more experienced at the company and who'd worked there in multiple roles. We also talked to engineers who had just graduated and started at the company in a rotational program um, or in a direct hire position. Um, so externships are, you know, again, focused at people, um, at students who are a little younger, freshmen, sophomores, um, and juniors who are, you know, looking for their first or second internship. Um, but internships would be, um, you know, really applying your skills to specific projects that the company is hiring you to work on. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so next I will go into um, some of the skills that I think are important for a mechanical engineer to have. So as you can see, I have broken down the slide into technical skills and soft skills. Um, so, you know, you hear mostly about technical skills and ensuring it's very technical field. You have to study a lot of math and science. You take so many um, hard technical classes, but I think soft skills can be just as important and really push you over the edge of being a really smart, intelligent engineer to being a successful and well-rounded engineer. Um, so technical skills, as you can see, and I've talked about, you know, design and CAD is such a big part of mechanical engineering. Um, of course, math and science calculations and troubleshooting when you are working on a project um, or going through some type of um, process. Um, technical writing is also a really big skill that I'm currently practicing through different types of lab reports or research papers that I write for my classes. Um, technical writing is much different than, you know, writing an essay for college because you have to focus on the specific technical details that you want to communicate um, with most likely a technical audience to be reading the paper or whatever work you're presenting. Um, and I think the PLTW classes that I took in high school really helped me to understand what technical writing was and have a leg up when I did my first paper in college um, for an engineering design class. Um, and of course, you know, testing and validation is such a big part of mechanical engineering. You don't always get it right the first time. Most likely you don't get it right the first time. Um, if you're doing a project, you have to try multiple times. Engineering is such an iterative, um, you know, iterative process and you have to go through something more than once to get the right result or get the more favorable result. Um, as well as research, you know, at the beginning of any project, you have to do a ton of research to make sure um, that you know what the problem is. You have all the background information or um, knowledge that you can find on the subject matter, as well as data analysis and interpretation, which go hand in hand. So moving to soft skills, um, you know, as I said, soft skills are really what can turn you into a more well-rounded and desirable engineer that a company wants to hire. Um, communication is you know, key for anyone. Um, if you're not able to communicate the ideas that you have, especially if it's a technical idea to a non-technical audience, you know, they won't understand your project or really see the value in it, even though it might be a really awesome innovative solution that you have. Um, and emotional intelligence and teamwork go together because you need to, you know, you'll, you'll be working on many teams. Of course, you, you probably are, already are in high school and even middle school projects um, and classes that you take. Um, but teamwork is such a big part of all the internships that I've had. I've always been on some type of engineering team or worked with other people to complete a deliverable, meet the end deadline, um, and learning those teamwork skills and how to effectively talk to your teammates and handle um, tough situations is really important as an engineer. Also, attention to detail is um, something which, you know, I've honed in over um, multiple design classes and experiences inside and outside of the classroom. Um, I think you, um, you know, you have to be very thorough, of course, as you go through any type of project, but as an engineer, if you miss some information or you, um, you know, don't read a specific specification on the back of a product or a label, 
you might miss some really important information that you need for designing the product or you know whatever you're doing. Um, and also the last two, multicultural awareness and languages. Um, I think these are becoming a more popular and a more um, desirable skill for engineers to have. Um, you know, there's so many companies which have global offices or global partners, and you might have to work with people who aren't in the same office as you or working on different things. Um, or they have, you know, maybe they worked on a project that you want to reference and you need to talk to them. Um, and it's really important to know how to um, communicate with people who are different than you and work on those diverse teams. Um, so multicultural awareness and language competency are definitely um, important soft skills for engineers as well. Those are some very unique soft skills that you pointed out. Um, so I have a lot of friends of mine who are interested in technology and computer science. So what are some of the specific technologies that one must know in order to be successful mechanical engineering, um, mechanical engineer? Are there any like certain softwares, um, certain programming languages that one should know? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, the main the main types of software that I've used so far as a mechanical engineer have been CAD software. Um, but of course there are other things that I've been introduced to throughout my college career, which have been helpful as well. So in terms of specifically computer aided design software, Creo Parametric is what I've used for my internship at Caterpillar um, and the majority of my design class classes at Illinois. Um, I've also used Autodesk Inventor in high school, which is a little bit easier to pick up and not um, not as complicated in my opinion. There's also um, um, Siemens NX is another computer aided design software, which I use during my internship at Molex and SolidWorks, Fusion 360 are some other ones. There's a ton out there. Um, and there's a lot of other softwares that I probably haven't even heard of or haven't used myself. Um, so, you know, if you use something else or if you learn something else in high school or on the side, it'll still prepare you for you know, a design engineering role or your first design engineering class in college. A lot of the knowledge transfers from one software to another, which is really nice. So, you know, when I came into college, I'd never used Creo Parametric, but because I was familiar with Autodesk Inventor, I could already apply those skills and feel more comfortable using it in college for the first time. Um, another software, which I would definitely recommend looking into if you're interested, is MATLAB. Um, it's more of a computational coding based software, which um, I use heavily as a mechanical engineer, but I also know other engineering majors who use it a lot as well to, um, you know, you can graph things, you can create, um, you can create um, all types of matrices and equations and things in MATLAB to help with engineering calculation. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So um, almost at the end of the presentation, I want to talk about, you know, what are my future plans and some advice and suggestions that I have for the high schoolers and everyone else on the call. So for me, I'm, you know, I'm definitely interested in working in the healthcare industry. Um, I think that it's, um, you know, a lot of the types of roles that I've looked into in career paths are focused on how I can make a difference and be, um, you know, bring something positive into the world and be, make a positive difference. Um, but, you know, as, as we've said before, there is so much um, evolving, you know, scientific technology and innovation that's happening right now. And, you know, there might be something else which I'm interested in in a few years or a new opportunity which sparks my interest in a totally different field, um, which I want to explore as well. Um, and I think it's totally okay to not really know what you want to do yet. Or if you're in high school, not know what your major is going to be in college yet, that's totally okay. Um, but I do know that I want to make a tangible difference. And this is one industry that I, you know, could see myself doing that in. I also, you know, would love to explore product or project management, um, which I did in my past internship. And I definitely liked it. And I think it would be um, a really cool career path to pursue for myself, um, along with starting in a rotational program to, um, you know, try different types of jobs before settling into, um, settling into one specifically. And really just working on a people focused job where I get to work on a big team um, and I get to work with other people to help produce a solution or deliverable. So some advice that I have, um, you know, the, one of the reasons that I chose mechanical engineering is because I didn't have a really specific interest in electrical engineering and circuitry or um, chemical reactions and chemical engineering or bioengineering, but 
I think mechanical engineering is such an awesome major because you get you get such a big foundation in all of engineering. You can work in almost every industry or any company that you can think of. Um, and just moving to the next slide really quickly, I want to touch on that. Um, you know, this is not a comprehensive slide by any means, but um, I think a lot of the um, industries that mechanical engineers work in is machinery or manufacturing based, like I have as well in my internship experience so far. Um, I've listed some potential job titles that you might see in these industries, but you know, this could be working at Boeing, it could be making airplanes or, or shuttles. It could be um, working in the automotive industry and building cars or car parts. It could be working for an electrical based company like Molex and working on small connectors or electrical components. It could be, it could be anything. Um, or you could go into consulting and become a technical consultant um, or you know, work with different other, other types of insurance companies to give your advice and suggestions on how they should be running their projects or you know, dealing with customers. Um, you know, or you could go into research and academia. You could become a professor or a research you know, assistant and really dive deep into one specific technical aspect of mechanical engineering. Um, you know, so just from the slide, you can see that there's so many different paths that someone with a mechanical engineering degree can have. You can go into so many different companies um, and different career paths with a mechanical engineering degree. And something, something else which I wanted to touch on is that um, it's totally okay to you know, do something and not like it. It can be really hard to you know, go into an experience like an internship or a class and not really like it or not get out of it what you thought you were going to. Um, and I think that learning what you don't like to do is just as important as learning what you do like to do. Um, because it brings you one step closer to finding your dream job or, um, you know, a class that you really like or a career path that you might want to take yourself. Um, and, you know, that's definitely the case for me as well. I've had the different internship experiences because it's helped me narrow down what I think I would like to do in the future. Um, so, of course, you know, say yes to new opportunities that you get or that you find. Um, you never really know what you're going to learn or what you're going to do until you try it. So I think that, you know, if something seems out of the ordinary, but you're able to do it, go for it and try it because you never know who you're going to meet, who you might be able to network with or chat, chat with, um, and what experiences and skills they're going to share with you. Um, and of course, keep going to events like this and just learning about career paths and, um, you know, different types of jobs or industries that you want to be a part of one day. I think it'll help you become more inspired and um, just figure out, you know, what you want to major in in college or what type of job you want to have when you graduate. Um, and I think that, um, you know, it's been awesome that all of you guys are here today, but definitely keep going to the other events um, and exploring uh, mechanical engineering and other types of STEM disciplines. I think that's some great advice you brought up, Isha. I think that is, it is also imperative to, you know, be able to, you know, know your interests, know what you like, what you don't like. And then kind of use that to your leverage, use that to your advantage to figure out, oh, what's the right major for me? What field I should pursue, you know? So I think that's great. That's a great point that you brought up that you should um, try to figure out, you know, you should try to figure out your interest, what you like, what you don't like. So yeah, just wanted to say that. Yeah, definitely. All right. So the last thing I wanted to share was some upcoming events that um, specifically Illinois has. If you are currently a admitted high school senior, um, girl, you can go to Little Sisters Weekend that Society of Women Engineers puts on. You can meet um, other prospective students and current students at Illinois in your major. Um, and for everyone on the call, but specifically high schoolers, um, you can attend Engineering Open House and Beckman Open House, which are actually this upcoming weekend on Friday, Saturday. Um, and these are both phenomenal opportunities to just dive into engineering and STEM projects at Illinois. There's over 100 exhibits just at Engineering Open House that you can watch videos of. You can have, there's virtual escape rooms and different types of engagements that you can um, do through these opportunities. And I highly recommend looking into that. And lastly, I just put up the, my you know, LinkedIn QR code if anyone's interested in connecting with me or emailing me after with any other um, questions that you have, or if you want to talk further about anything that I mentioned. Um, but just thank you again for hosting me, Drew, and to Open Gears for inviting me. Um, I'd love to take any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Isha, for the lovely presentation. Um, we will now begin the Q&A portion of this event. 
Um, so we got a question. Um, so during this COVID time, how did you find internships, um, especially with Boeing, since travel has been impacted in this COVID time and, you know, work has been restricted to um, mainly virtual? Yeah, that's, that's a great question and definitely something which a lot of people have had to address because there's been so many changing factors um, and ways that companies have changed because of the pandemic. Um, you know, I was fortunate to receive the internship offer before the pandemic started. So I'd already committed to the internship and I had the spot, um, you know, set for the summer. And there were some companies who unfortunately had to cancel their internships or remove some of their interns or, you know, change the situation. But I was lucky that Boeing didn't and I was still able to continue the same work that I would have done um, in person, but just doing it virtually. So they were, you know, they able, they sent me a computer, um, they sent me all the equipment that I would need, and I just kind of set up my own desk at home and did the virtual phone calls and conference calls, um, and, you know, pretty much went about the internship in the same way I would have if I was there in person. You know, there's definitely things that were not the same, and I wasn't able to see the facilities and actually work in person with my boss and the other intern that I communicated with on a daily basis. Um, but I think that Boeing did a really fantastic job of making the interns feel welcome and supported even through the virtual environment. Awesome. So what inspired you to study mechanical engineering in the first place? You know, talk to me a little bit about like what in high school um, brought you to mechanical engineering? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I touched on this a little bit, but the NIUE program and the hands-on experiments I did there was really what first got me interested and in just doing things that I had never done, you know, in any class, um, any class project or anything like that. Um, you know, it was such a cool application of the math and science I was learning in school. And I had to understand how to build a circuit and how to, um, you know, how do these wires interact with each other and how, um, how does this software help me come up with a 3D printed part or how do I get from point A to point B? Um, I was able to explore some of those things through the program and those hands-on projects. Um, but I think during, you know, my involvement in the robotics team, as well as the principles of engineering class I took, really set me up specifically for mechanical engineering. Um, you know, I didn't really have a super strong interest in circuitry. I thought it was really cool, but I didn't want to study just electrical engineering or computer engineering. Um, I was also interested in CAD software and designing things online and 3D printing them. Um, and really um, building the robot was um, what, what maybe pushed me towards mechanical engineering a little bit more than computer engineering or computer science. Something like robotics has so many different moving parts. Of course, there's mechanical parts and systems within any robot, but there's also coding softwares and languages that you need to know in order to program the robot to do what you want it to. Um, and I think mechanical engineering sort of stuck out to me because it seemed really broad and like I learned a lot of information, which then I could apply into anything I wanted later. Um, I think for me, I didn't, you know, when I was in high school, I didn't know what type of job I would want to have or what industry I want to work in. And that's still what I'm, you know, figuring out now as I go through college. Um, but mechanical engineering seemed like a really strong fit for me because I would have such a good engineering knowledge base at the end of college. That's great to hear. So were there any other high school classes besides PLTW that you took? Like, did you take any physics class? Did you take any chemistry class? And how did both of these classes impact you? Yeah, I, you know, I think as part of the general high school curriculum, you have to take some type of um, chemistry and physics. So of course I did that. Um, but I also took an extra AP physics course during my senior year of high school. Um, and I think that was really helpful because there were classes in college which covered the same exact material. So I was already prepared for those classes because I'd taken um, AP physics in high school. Um, and I felt a little bit more comfortable going to the class, knowing that I'd seen some of the problems and uh, material before. Um, I would say for me, the engineering classes I took were definitely the best preparation I had for college. Um, because it was directly applicable to my major and the work that I do now. Um, but definitely the AP physics class helped. I also took um, like Calc 1 and 2, I think it was Calc BC in high school um, as an AP course, which again, those were direct classes which I took in college again. So I was already able to use the knowledge which I built in high school. And, you know, first it was a GPA boost 
as your freshman year in college, but it was also a really great way to relearn those concepts, which are then applied in many mechanical engineering classes. Great. So we have a very unique question in the chat. What is a piece of advice you would tell your younger self, specifically in your junior or senior year in high school? Sure. So, um, you know, I think um, myself being a girl and being a underrepresented minority in the engineering field, but definitely in mechanical engineering, I would say don't be afraid to participate in things that you might think aren't for you. Um, you know, joining the robotics team was such a big wake up call because there was hardly any other girls on the team. And it seemed like I was the only one who was a girl on my team and who brought a different perspective to my to my group. Um, and, you know, there was, there was times where I didn't feel heard or I felt scared to speak up because there wasn't really any other girls in the room. And I felt like there was no one like me on the team or that I could talk to and feel comfortable with. Um, and, you know, sometimes it stopped me from being more involved or saying something that I wanted to. Um, but, you know, just because I was a girl doesn't mean I had le any less important contributions to make or I, you know, didn't have knowledge on something that I could share. I did, but I might have been, you know, more afraid to say it or to speak up. Um, and I would definitely say, you know, if you're a girl, don't be afraid to do that. But even, you know, if you're not a girl, that don't be afraid to take up opportunities which are outside of your comfort zone because I think that's where you learn and grow the most. Um, you know, something for me was studying abroad was super scary at first, and I had no idea what I was doing, and it felt like I was super alone. But I sort of grew to learn and develop throughout that experience. Um, because it pushed me outside of my comfort zone and was a challenge. Um, so, you know, definitely take up challenges. If it's an AP class that so you might be scared to take, go ahead and take it. And, you know, if you work hard and you, you know, obviously you have to put in effort and you have to make sure that you are, um, you are doing your best to succeed, um, it can be a really positive experience and help you grow and, um, you know, learn from that. Fantastic. Um, do you have any advice on how kids specifically in high school should spend their summers? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, I think um, something that I did during a high school summer was take classes. Um, and, you know, this is definitely common for high school and college students. Um, you know, even more now, I think because of the pandemic, there is a lot of opportunities available that weren't before to take free college classes online or you know, free certification courses through something like Coursera. Um, I actually took one this past summer and it was about project management. And you know, it wasn't necessarily directly engineering related or anything, but still taking that course was really unique and interesting to me and definitely not something that I would get in my normal course curriculum. So I think um, you know, spending a summer exploring an interest of yours or exploring something um, is really great because you don't necessarily have time to do that during school itself. So summer is a great way to, is a great time to do that. Um, you know, take a class on Coursera, get a certification. You can put it on your resume. You can talk about it um, in your college applications or in interviews. And it really shows that you are going above and beyond to learn and explore passions or interests that you have. Um, and something that I had mentioned earlier, I was part of the NIUE program and there were summer camps. There are so many summer camps available for middle school and high school students nowadays. Um, I did a couple in middle school that were really awesome. They were at, um, you know, different universities like um, Indiana State University and Purdue University. Um, you, know, you know, University of Illinois also has a ton of great summer camp opportunities. Um, of course, you know, I'm sure most of them are virtual now, but it can really introduce you more to specific engineering disciplines and explore that further, um, you know, than you probably would in any in middle school or high school class. Um, so I think looking for those types of summer camp opportunities, but also, um, you know, getting an Arduino and just sitting down and learning how to use it is, can be really fun because you're exploring a new type of software and a new device that you might have never used before, but you can build all these cool things with it. I've used an Arduino many times in middle school, high school, and college to do different types of projects. Um, and I think just the main point of you know what you do with your summer you should use it productively to learn a new skill or explore a passion that you don't have time to any other time yep indeed like you said summer is like the best time to explore your interests develop new skills like you said take a class or two on these platforms like coursera and edx um, those are some great points that you brought up
Um, someone was curious, um, is it easy to get internships? And while doing the internships, how is your environment like? Sure. So, um, you know, I think getting an internship is definitely different if you are a freshman in college versus a junior in college. Um, as a junior in college, you have more experience, you've taken more classes up till that point. So you have a little bit more knowledge specifically into mechanical engineering, um, but also the basic math and science principles. Um, so, you know, I think if you're starting off as a freshman or sophomore looking for an internship, it will be more difficult. There's definitely companies that only want to hire juniors because they know you're more experienced. Um, you know, you just have more knowledge of the mechanical engineering coursework that they're hiring you to do. And, um, I, I would say the best way to, you know, really try to get that internship for the summer is to network as much as you can with the people that you know, um, and really put yourself out there. Go on, you know, go on LinkedIn and apply to the job opportunities there. My school has a, um, has a platform called Handshake, where a bunch of employers post their job, job postings and openings, and you can directly chat with employers there, similar to what you can do on LinkedIn. Um, and to get an internship, you do have to put in a lot of work. You won't, you know, you know, you won't just get it handed to you. Um, no one's going to say, "Oh, do you want to do this internship?" You definitely have to try and put yourself out there. But if you put in your best effort, um, you know, there can only be positive results. And the way that I got a lot of my internships was through the Society of Women Engineers networking events that I went to um, at at the national conferences. There are career fairs, and you go to the career fair, you you know, have your resume with you you have a little elevator pitch to tell the recruiter and the company about yourself, why you're a good fit for the position and you know what you can bring to the company, what you can learn. Um, so really honing in on the skills that you have, the skills that you wanna learn and being a really flexible and open person to those opportunities is a good way to set yourself up for an internship because you might not know everything that the company is asking of you, but if you show that you're interested and willing to learn, and you're you know, ready to learn and excited, they'll see the passion in you and wanna hire you for the internship. Those are some awesome words. Um, could you quickly explain what Coursera is? Someone just wanted to know what it sure. was. Yeah, I, I actually was only introduced to Coursera this past summer when I took the first course on there, um, but it's a learning platform that has, you know, I don't even know how many classes it has, but it definitely has over like probably 500, maybe even more than that at this point. Um, maybe a thousand. Um, it has a ton of different types of classes. There's coding classes. You can learn different types of software like Python or Java. You can also learn, um, you know, skills such as project management, which I took a class on. And, you know, if there's any topic or subject matter that you're curious about, like literally anything, I'm sure you can go search it up on Coursera and find um, something to, you know, just help you learn about it. It's not um, you don't have to pay for a subscription um, and get the certificate. You can just take the class and audit it, which is what I did. So, you know, I don't have the certification on my resume, but I went through the class um, and, you know, took notes. I learned the concepts. I did the quizzes and I was still able to go through the curriculum over the course of the summer um, and really get a better understanding of what is project management. So I would definitely look into Coursera um, for any subject matter that you're interested in. But if it's something more specific, like, um, a computer software like Java or Python, there might be more specific um, classes online which you can take than Coursera. Um, but you know, any your own Google research can definitely find you those opportunities. So I want to switch gears and ask you more about what attracted you about the about Illinois programs the most compared to other colleges. You know, as a high school student myself, I'm starting to look at different colleges. So it, it would be great for you to share. Um, what about um, UIUC um, attracted you the most? Yeah, that's a great question. It's you know not an easy, easy decision at all. There's so many colleges out there and there's amazing engineering programs. Um, you know, of course the first, um, the first, I guess, ranking that I looked at was how highly ranked is the U of I MECI program? And it is pretty highly ranked. I don't know the exact number, but um, it's probably top five in the country for where to study mechanical engineering. Um, and of course, I knew that I wanted to go to a top program so that I could be around really bright and innovative students and also um, faculty and staff who were really excited and passionate about their work because I wanted to be a part of that and, you know, part of that innovative atmosphere. Um, something specifically about Illinois that I, I touched on earlier is 
the Women in Engineering program because that was super important for me to feel supported and know that I had mentors and friends at Illinois um, who, you know, were going to help me through this really difficult degree. Mechanical engineering is not easy. Um, you know, there's no engineering major that's going to be a walk in the park, but um, I do feel really supported by the mentors in the Women in Engineering program here and friends I've made in Society of Women Engineers. And I knew that Illinois had a really big section and such a strong push for that, which was definitely a factor in my decision. Um, something specifically related to mechanical engineering and why I chose here, I was able to take a tour of the innovation studio and lab in one of the mechanical engineering buildings. So there's not just one, but there's actually three buildings solely dedicated to mechanical engineering on our campus, which is crazy. I'd never heard of that. I didn't know that colleges had so many buildings for any type of major, but specifically mechanical engineering. The fact that this university had so many state-of-the-art facilities dedicated to students learning mechanical engineering was really unique and um, you know, definitely showed me the commitment to the college and all the resources which I had access to. But specifically, the Innovation Studio um, is a place that has over 23 printers, there's laser cutters, there's a full wood shop, there's tons of tools available for any mechanical engineering student to use. If it was for a class project or a personal project, you could go in there, work on it, get help from other students. And, you know, it seemed like I had so much freedom to really practice all my skills in and outside the classroom through uh, mechanical engineering here. So those were definitely three of my top um, qualities in why I chose here. Wow, I never knew that um, UIUC devoted so many buildings just for one department. Thanks for sharing that. So I've also heard that um, UIUC is crowded and I'm sure that there's a lot of competition among students for things like internships and opportunities. So how have you dealt with this competition? Have you experienced any of this? Yeah, that's, you know, that's definitely true. This is a huge school. There's about um, probably 800 to 900 students just in the mechanical engineering department. Um, and something really unique about Illinois is that we have this research park facility, which I had mentioned briefly before, right behind our campus. Um, you know, I can walk there from where I am currently on campus. It's really close. There is over 100 companies that have offices there with, you know, full-time engineers, um, people who work in different departments, and they are there specifically to hire you as a student. They want your expertise and your, you know, undivided attention as a student. They know that you're eager to learn and, um, you know, willing to do whatever you can to get that work experience as a student. Um, and I think that's a really, you know, really top reason why there are so many successful Illinois students in getting internships and jobs, because there's companies, you know, right on our campus that want to hire us and are super interested in engaging with student um, organizations like the Society of Women Engineers. Um, and, you know, I've been able to go to coffee chats and networking lunches and events where those corporate companies come onto our campus and talk to us. They want to get to know, you know, get to know you as students. Um, and, you know, if you network with people and you show your passion and interest, they'll be more inclined to hire you and, you know, want to give you an internship. And I think, you know, of course, another, um, another resource that Illinois provides is huge career fairs, both semesters um, of, of the year. So, you know, there's tons of schools that have career fairs. Illinois has a really massive career fair, even though it was virtual, there was still a lot of companies that came this past year. Um, and it really gives you the chance to talk one on one with recruiters from multiple companies and pitch yourself and say, here's why I want to intern at your company and this is why you should hire me. Um, so I think that, you know, as a mechanical engineer, as any engineer in Illinois, you've already gotten into a really top notch program. This is not an easy, you know, engineering school to get into. It's very well known and world renowned. Um, in many departments, but especially mechanical engineering. Um, so if you're already a student here, you, um, you know, are academically successful and you can learn the soft skills and the technical skills um, to find an internship and job. And speaking of internships, um, um, what is a typical day um, as a mechanical engineering intern like? Could you like walk through to what, um, through what your day looks like, you know, from start to end? Sure. Um, so, you know, this definitely varies from company to company and what the internship is structured as. Um, for me at Molex, when I was a mechanical engineering intern, I had 
three or four main projects that I was presented with at the beginning of the summer. So, you know, right at the start of my internship, I knew I would have these four large projects to work on, but I might be able to take on side tasks or smaller, um, smaller items as they come up throughout the summer. So, you know, you start with an outline of your three, you know, typically three months at a company during the summer. Um, and usually you'll have um, intern events to go to, which could mean networking with other interns. It could mean um, professional talks with, um, you know, leaders in the company. For example, we were able to talk to the CEO and, um, you know, other chief executives in the company. They want to donate your time and get to know the intern. Um, and, you know, I was able to go to a lot of those events throughout all of my internships so far. Um, but on a typical work day, um, you know, I, there's of course deadlines that you have to meet throughout the summer. If all of your deadlines are flexible, then you have to break up your time and say, okay, I'm gonna spend, you know, three hours working on this project today and more time on it tomorrow if the deadline is coming up. Um, but you want to um, structure your time in a way that you can complete all of the deliverables and the projects that you have. So for me, um, I did have some more flexible deadlines, but then I did have some that were strict and I had to get it done on a certain day or send it off to a customer by a certain time. So, you know, I'd sit down at the beginning of the day and look at um, if there's any meetings on my schedule, what did I have to go to? What did I have to present to my boss or to my team um, or to the customer that I was working with? Um, and just plan out my day. And um, usually I would dedicate, you know, specific chunks of time to specific projects that I knew I had to make progress on. Um, but I would also frequently do check-ins with mentors and my boss at the internship to make sure that I was on track um, and really to just answer any questions or any doubts that I had. So I think it can be, of course, variable, but um, I would spend, you know, I would spend the majority of every day working on each project I had and tackling it in small chunks throughout the whole summer. All right. Um, what was the most challenging thing in your college while doing engineering and an internship? Yeah, great question. I think, um, you know, during my sophomore year of college, when I was working at Caterpillar, um, I was working there part time. So it was about um, 10 to 15 hours a week that I would go to the research park facility. And I was also doing a full class load. I was taking um, you know, probably at least four to five engineering and general education classes um, during that semester. And it was a very difficult, you know, load to balance. Um, you know, it takes time to get there. It takes time to just set up and plan your day and figure out, okay, what day can I even go work this week? Do I, you know, do I have classes in the morning? Do I have classes in the afternoon? Um, the first step was just tackling where is my time going and how do I fit in this part-time job internship into my schedule with a full class load. Um, I think it was, um, it was a little bit easier for me to adjust because a lot of the work I was doing was directly correlated with classes I was taking at the time. So I was doing a lot of design work and that was really similar to, um, to the um, you know, career parametric design work that I did at Caterpillar. So it was really cool to see the parallel in that. And, um, you know, just be a little bit more easier and transitioning to the internship while also doing school because I already was familiar with the material that I was working with. Um, but, you know, a big part of college in general is being able to figure out a good balance of your time. And um, it's definitely hard. It's not, it's not easy to figure out how to spend your time. It's a lot more open of a schedule than high school. You don't go to school for eight hours a day. You have a lot more flexibility in how you structure your time. Um, so. You know, looking back, there's definitely ways that I could have changed my schedule up or made it a little bit easier to handle, but it was difficult, but it's not, um, you know, it's not um, something that I would stray away from if you get the opportunity to do so. You know, it might have been easier if I took one class off of my class load or if I wasn't as involved in the extracurricular club that semester um, because of the internship experience as well, but I would say it's definitely doable if you have that option. Awesome. So my final question will be, you know, just what do you love about mechanical engineering the most? Like what excites you about mechanical engineering? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think what excites me about mechanical engineering is the endless possibilities that you have of creating so many cool, innovative solutions. There's, you know, so many problems that you can identify, even just looking around my room right now or looking outside the window. There's something that I see and I think, oh, you know, I could fix that or I can make it better 
or I can make it easier to use or um, to interact with for you know anyone. And being a mechanical engineer gives me so much knowledge and just um, you know passion for how do I how do I fix this? How do I make it better? How do I make my own life easier? But how do I also help other people go through the same problems or um, you know go through the same things that I am? And I think mechanical engineering is so exciting because you work with all these different fields. You can work in any industry that you want to, to make a difference and, you know, really just create new products and solutions. Um, and I think the, um, you know, technology is changing so rapidly. So there's all these new types of technologies, such as 3D printing, which has become so popular in the last, you know, 10, 15 years, um, which is super exciting. It's a new way of making things and it's a new way of, um, you know, bringing solutions and innovation into any type of industry. So I think those are some of the things that's really excite me about mechanical engineering. Asia, thank you so much. Um, I would like to open it up to um, the audience. Do you guys have any questions? All right, well, um, thank you so much for your presentation, Isha. I'll just stop recording.